saw Brian DaCosta won the WMBF world heavyweight and overall title. Yeah, he wasn't even a pro two weeks before. So that's what's crazy. He had to go win his pro card, then he had to win a show. Yeah, it was like a we uh we had the perfect plan. <laughs> that's incredible. When you say the perfect plan, why don't we start there? What did you mean by the perfect plan in that sense? Was there anything specific that you are speaking to when you say that? So Brian was a pro with the OCB. So in 2019, I coached Brian. He won his pro card in the OCB and we went and did the Orton Cup. Now at that time, I'll say that Brian was not all that he could be. Brian is an incredibly talented bodybuilder, just tons of muscle. But in 2019, it was his first time competing. And when he asked me to coach him, I said, Brian, it's going to be a waste of your time and of my time if you're not fighting to be a world champion. Because I had coached world champions before. I'd seen the look and I'm like, you have it. Until he got to the Yorton Cup, he was eating like one meal a day. His cardio was, I would say, less than optimal, barely doing any cardio. And he just wasn't really optimizing his physique, right? But he still won his pro card and he went to the Yorton Cup. And then he got to see what pro natural bodybuilding is all about. Kurt Widener was in his class. Oh, cool. And if you've never seen Kurt Widener in person, he is absolutely the definition of like conditioning, fullness. The guy is just hard as nails. If anyone's listening and they haven't been to a pro natural bodybuilding show and you go off pictures you don't get it they're harder than the actual mr olympia they are leaner and harder it's like a crazy look so that was the first time brian saw that in 2019 he didn't place at the yorton what's funny is when they brought them all out and they were just doing facing front they put brian right in the middle they're like oh here's our champ when brian faced the back he wasn't as lean he didn't mm -hmm. pose well so he didn't do all like the little things right so fast forward to earlier this year brian goes hey i want to do wnbf worlds and i'm like well you got to reach out to them because i don't know if they're going to honor your ocb pro status and he's like yeah you're right they won't so i said okay now we got to get your pro card and i believe to do worlds you have to do a show before and he's like yeah you're right so we found a show and this is what i mean by the perfect plan two weeks before worlds which was in Seattle, there was a show in Boston called the Monster Mash. Now, a couple of years ago, I had a client do this before. He won the men's physique pro card on Saturday, and then they have a pro show on Sunday. So he won both. So I knew it could be done. And I said, well, I, I know this little hack. If they still have it, they had the Monster Mash. I said, we fly to Boston. You get your pro card on Saturday. You compete as a pro on Sunday, and then you're qualified for Worlds. So yeah, it actually worked out really well. He did the show Saturday, won that, won his pro card, did the show Sunday, won the pro show, and then two weeks later went to Worlds, won the heavyweights, and then lo and behold, won the world title. And the guy that had won the title two years in a row was in his class. And I believe he got third. That's how good it was this year <laughs> wow so and to be clear for the listeners paul you didn't coach brian back in 2019 it was, I did. this was oh you did oh, i did okay. i did I, I use the word coach to describe like you know me and brian's relationship at that time was you know we were like very good friends his girlfriend at the time was a bikini competitor so we got to know each other just from expos we were both involved with core nutritionals and he came up to me on arnold and he said what do you think about me doing a natural bodybuilding show and you know i didn't know him at the time and i said i'll be willing to coach you you know i don't want to waste your time if you're not trying to be a world World champion you're wasting your time and he's like what does mm -hmm. that mean he wasn't really familiar with the natural bodybuilding world you know i grew up a fan of like brian whitaker and doug miller and so i knew all these world titles and shows i've even done the yorton cup myself and I've been to WNBF Worlds, which to me, WNBF Worlds is the most prestigious natural bodybuilding show. It is a true world championship. When you go there, there are athletes in teams from China, Italy, Ireland, Germany. So you feel like you're at a like an Olympic event. It's like a world championship. The Yorton Cup, although it's amazing, doesn't have that international feel. WNBF is global. So when he told me he wanted to do WNBF, we had done one show in 2019, a WNBF show, and he did not win the overall. And it was simply because the judges in the WNBF, they make sure that you are going to be able to hold your poses. And he was beating the guys in the overall, but after about 10 minutes of posing, he just stopped. He just couldn't hold his poses. And he ended up losing to the lightweight who was extremely conditioned, very, very well balanced. But I mean, Brian is as big as you can be as a natural body, but he was 5'9", the morning of Worlds, he was 195. Wow. That's like that Doug Miller weight, pretty same much. Same as Doug Miller. Doug Miller is about the same height and weight, if that tells you anything. So, Oh, wow. Truly, that's incredible. Yeah, that's and crazy. And I'm talking about striated glutes, split hamstrings, like Brian is dialed too. So that's, yeah, yeah. You're right. You do have to see that in person because I did not know that he had the same pretty much stats as Doug from a weight and height perspective. Not so much, obviously, insertions and structure and all that. And I think what 
freaks people out about Doug is the fact that his arms are so out of this world that you think when you see him, you're like, this guy just almost doesn't compare to anybody. He's like pinnacle. You almost think from a natural bodybuilding yeah. viewpoint. But with Brian, I did not know that. I did see a picture with him and Chris Elkins. And Chris is amazing. But when he was standing next to Chris, and I'm sure that had to do with height. It was, uh, Chris, is, I'm sure that Chris is what, five four five five. I think so he's only like 140 pounds on stage, maybe something like that. Chris has incredible like genetic structure. Like if you see him standing by himself, he looks like he's 200 pounds. That's it. Tiny little base. <laughs> he's like, he's all chest and abs. Like there's nothing else to him. So, and I think this year, Chris, I think he'd won it twice. He, I think he got fourth in his class this year. So it feels like the natural bodybuilding world is having a little bit of a resurgence, at least in the depth of the competition. Like, and I think obviously the pandemic really hindered natural bodybuilding more than any other form of bodybuilding. Right. Chris is amazing. We had him on the podcast. It's funny if you're judging that like as a judge and you had both those guys on stage next to each other, that's tough. That must be a tough job as a judge. I, I wouldn't. Yeah. So, you. so one of the guys that was in attendance of WNBF worlds, if I ever meet this guy, I'm going to shake his hand, his YouTube channel. It's like Wayne Carmona. And he was literally mm. sitting dead center of the venue and filming. So he's got the lightweights, the middleweights, the heavyweights, and the overall full prejudging on his YouTube channel go check those out they're very well filmed because brian was not the leanest guy in the overall both of the german guys were probably a little bit leaner than him but mm -hmm. where he really stood out is when you know you they turn those guys to the side they're a little bit more linear brian is so bubbly and brian has balance there's no muscle group in his body that is not really developed and what's scary is like after the show he's like what can i do to be better and i'm like okay now i know you're a champion because he wants to come back next year and be better so i'd say he was at about 90 percent I think he can be better. Awesome. So when you say better, do you mean from a development standpoint or just getting leaner standpoint? I think we could probably fine tune a little bit of the posing. You know, mm -hmm. posing is not his strength. I think we could be probably just a little bit leaner. And then, you know, another year of training under his belt. I mean, his physique, there's really no flaws. I mean, even if we come back at the same weight, but a couple percent leaner and work on the posing, we're going to be talking about one of the all-time greats of natural bodybuilding. You know, you're going to start putting him in that conversation with Doug, Brian Whitaker, you know, for me, you know, knowing the sport the way I do, you know, just the history of natural bodybuilding is so awesome. You, you got Siobhan Cunningham. Hmm. Um, gosh, I'm probably forgetting some names right now, but these are like the all time greats, the guys that won multiple world titles. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, a lot of those names, pretty much every single one you mentioned on the podcast, except for Brian Whitaker, to be fair, trying to get him on. But with um, Brian DaCosta to go back for a second. So it's interesting because he is someone who stays relatively lean year round or is is that just his Instagram? Like he picks and chooses? Oh no, he, he got up to 220 pounds this year. That's the heaviest he's been since, you know, we've been kind of working together. I think part of that was in preparation for prep. He wanted to see, but I mean, as soon as we add cardio and pull his calories down to like three, 400 a day, his carbs, like he just starts dropping body fat. You know, when I first met him, you see somebody before you meet them, you start to make some assumptions and you see yeah. a guy that looks like Brian. He's incredibly handsome. He's jacked. You're like, oh, this guy's going to be full of them himself. He is the most down to earth, humble, nicest human being. So those characteristics just make you appreciate him even more. But I don't think the man has the ability to not have abs. That's just his makeup. You know, he's just built like that. That's interesting. It does in a way, I don't think I've seen Doug ever out of shape. It does remind me a little bit when you're speaking about Brian, it does remind me a little bit of Doug in that sense, because you're right. Like, I, have you ever seen Doug without abs? Doug Miller? Maybe no, you have. I haven't. But I, I've spent a lot of time with Doug and he lives his life like he's in prison. We go out to eat. He's cutting a potato in half. If we're in his hometown, his meals are prepped for the day. He's eating out of Tupperware. Like that's just how he lives his life. It's not like, oh, I'm in prep and I'm out of prep for like most of us. That's just how he lives his life. So I was dieted down to do a show this June and I went up to their headquarters and got to see Doug and we did a leg day together and he took his shirt off at the end and we flexed for a second. And I'm like, you can't even tell which one of us is competing. Like he looked just as lean as I did. And I was a few weeks out. So obviously his standard of competition is world champion champion level so like you know we went out and on his boat he's got he lives on a lake in north carolina so we went out and did like some wakeboarding and stuff yeah the guy literally just looks like he's three weeks out perpetually he looks amazing so not many people can do that like i don't even mean from a psychological standpoint solely i i also mean physiologically but you would know this better than me what do you think I, about I, that statement oh yeah i think you know i think we think of like someone that looks like doug or brian as someone that lives this incredibly rigid lifestyle and they're miserable couldn't be further from the truth 
truth. You know, you don't look at somebody who's seven feet tall and think, oh, that guy's just doing things differently. You just go, no, that's just how he was made. He's freaking meant to be the center for the Orlando Magic. Cool. Mm -hmm. But because of drugs and all these things, we see someone like Brian or Doug and we just immediately go, oh, they're just, they're on drugs. Because it's kind of our own insecurities, right? We're like, well, I'm eating right and I'm training and I don't look like that. Well, yeah, right. well, you can go dribble a basketball. It doesn't mean you're going to be the point guard for the Lakers, right? There is an inherent amount of talent that's involved. Now, when you take someone that has that talent, like a Doug or a Brian, and you also give them this psychological need to train and eat the way they do, that's when you get these absolutely freaky human beings. But to me, it's no different than somebody that's just obsessed with the guitar. And you would see that and go, wow, they're so talented. They're really good at the guitar. No, they've just played 44,000 hours on the guitar and you haven't. So I get it when people question it, if they're natural or not. Because I mean, first time I met Doug, I was like, what in the world is going on? How is that? How are we the same like race or the same species? Like it doesn't even make sense. But over time, you just, you know, I, I grew up playing a lot of sports and you spend time with just freak athletes and freak people and you just realize like the human condition is so vast that to be like oh this person's a liar that's just your own insecurities that you're uncomfortable with it and i'm sure there's people on here going well you're just naive great i'm naive but i've also spent a ton of time with these human beings and i have no reason to believe it and i've actually done it myself like i've put in the work for years to get on a bodybuilding stage and i've gotten to a place where i felt damn good but i still can't compete with that like that's just a whole other to put it in perspective i won my pro card and got seven Second at the Yorton Cup at 6'3, 195. Oh, okay. Brian is 5'9, 195, right? I'm just not meant to be an open bodybuilding world champion. That's just not what I'm meant to be. I can be very competitive in like men's physique and things like that, but those guys are just, you know, they're few and far between. It's awesome to see in person. It's just mind boggling. First off, that was actually really well said in terms of the basketball analogy, because you're right. You can pick up a basketball and try your hardest and practice every day. It doesn't mean you're going to make it to the NBA, right? So why do we think any different from a bodybuilding perspective? Yeah. It's funny. You take someone like Brian or Doug, they're 5'9", and they compete at 195, roughly. How many bodybuilders, natural bodybuilders compete at that height slash weight? Very few. Like I know a lot of natural bodybuilders at that height competing at, as a lightweight, like 160s. Well, to give you perspective, Brian Whitaker won the lightweight world title at 5'9", 163. There it is. Now, Brian has exceptional muscle insertions. Beautiful. Mm. His quad insertions, his lat insertions. You know, I was such a big fan of Brian. He decided to do an OCB show. Gosh, I mean, this was 2017 or 2018, maybe. I said, screw it. I got to go see this in person. I flew up to see him in Boston at the Cape Cod show just because I wanted to see him. Uh, my buddy Ron Palmer did the show as well. And so I went and saw him the day before. We were pretty good friends. And he's like, hey, come check out my conditioning and give me some feedback and we'll pose. And I'm like, Brian Whitaker wants me to help him pose. I'm like, I've made it. You know, I was so excited. Yeah. So, And I just remember walking into the hotel and he had like his track suit on and you would have thought he was a homeless person. He was so frail looking in this little track suit. Then we go downstairs, you know, he gets onto his trunks and starts posing and you're like oh you're clearly on steroids like there's like this huge difference between a natural bodybuilder that's shredded in their clothes versus out of their clothes and i think a lot of that does come down to the aesthetics of the muscle insertions and all those things so brian did not win that show he won the lightweights and lost the overall I'm trying to remember the guy's name was that, willie brown was that recent? i think beat him no that wasn't this was, recent yeah, yeah it's funny because he ended up a right. few weeks later he ended up winning the york cup so he went mm. from cape cod to the yorton won his class and then the overall at the yorton and i believe to this day he's still the only person to win the yorton cup and wnbf worlds in the same year oh wow that's yeah, our, he was, so that I think he unified the title for like one year i don't even know if you're allowed to do that anymore but it was like this perfect year for him it's not necessarily about the height and the weight it's also down to muscle insertions and you know your waist and it just comes down to like a perfect storm of things especially at that level so i don't think i've really taken it in that brian just won wnbf worlds that is a title that is very very coveted very few people have had that title like the overall title especially right right and first off congrats you're probably the type of guy who's like that was all brian but you coached him so that's a big thing for you too right so uh congratulations on that by the way yeah i i the term coach is um it's different from person to person you know with brian i feel like it's a little bit of psychology with him he was starting to question whether he could win or not and i had to remind mm -hmm. him that like in natural bodybuilding it's who shows up on the day and you know i really did help him with his nutrition you know obviously his training really he handled all that but nutrition peaking diet breaks refeeds those are things that we really collaborated on you know he would give me feedback on when he felt good when he felt run down we talked about when i felt his conditioning was good enough we definitely 
pushed him at times to be harder. There's definitely an element there where I'm very proud of the work that we did together. But yeah, like I compare coaching to like being a college football coach. You can be the best college football coach in the world, but if you're getting D3 recruits and you're playing against Alabama, sorry, you're just not winning. I've just been coaching long enough that I'm getting D1 recruits and going to these shows with my skill set as a coach and also great athletes. That's a recipe for success. Oh, absolutely. Were you at WME Awards this year? Did you get a chance no, to go? It's, so that was the busiest coaching weekend I've ever had. I literally had like athletes in seven different shows. That same weekend was a show called Ben Weeder, which is the only drug-free show you can qualify for an IFBB Pro Card in. I had 17 athletes there. I was in Fort Lauderdale um, with my athletes at the Atlantic Coast. I had athletes at, I mean, Masters USA Championships. I had a girl at the Hawaii Pro that weekend. And then I had Brian at WMBF Worlds. So no, I, I was a little bummed because I would have loved to been there living in Tampa. I find it tough to travel to the West coast for shows with dad life. Now I'm up at five, five 30. So you translate that to the West coast. I'm up at two 30. Yeah. Doesn't go well. So yeah, I stayed in Fort Lauderdale, but we stayed in really close contact. The nice thing is technology these days. I mean, gosh, we were doing like multiple, like FaceTime posing sessions. We were talking after each meal and we had already done a show. So I felt like the process was pretty similar. We didn't really mm. change a whole lot. We just had to make sure he stayed tight and filled out and that was it i mean you know what's funny is so i was in fort lauderdale my show that i was at in fort lauderdale was on sunday so i had a a girl who had just gotten seventh at the olympia competing so she was battling it out for that win very stressful she was one of the three in the final call out so i knew she was in the top three and then brian i had a client that was in the inbf worlds like the amateur portion he had competed the day before and he stayed on sunday to watch so i was getting live updates from him they moved brian to middle brian looks good oh. so i was getting like these updates he's like i think brian's first or second in heavyweights well literally ariana gets announced as the pro winner at the atlantic coast so she's going back to the olympia big deal for me that's like that's for me the the most exciting moment is when i get an athlete qualified to go to the olympia within a few minutes we're in line to get feedback from the judges and i get a text message brian won the whole show oh i literally God. dropped my phone and someone's like what happened i'm like i think my client just won wmbf worlds overall they're like what i'm like yeah and so then i called brian and he's like he's like i'll call i'll call you back I don't know what's happening. Like, so yeah, it was, it was a pretty surreal, like 15 minutes of my life, <laughs> but that I weekend did. was wild. And then I also had my girl win. So at the Ben Weeder, my girl won that pro show to go to the Olympia. So in one weekend, I had two girls qualify through the Olympia. One guy won an overall at the world's. It was probably the greatest coaching weekend of my life. <laughs> Hands wow. Down. That's amazing. Really happy to hear that for you. It was crazy. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, I didn't sleep for a few days, but yeah, it's good. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. From excitement or just from work, sheer workload? You know, it's it's a lot of anxiety <laughs> around the show because, you know, like a client can literally text me at like eight o'clock and be like, coach, I feel like I'm holding water. And I'll be like, okay, well, let's do this. And I'll go to bed and I'll wake up at two in the morning being like, oh my God, what if they wake up soft or flat? You know, like now imagine that I had 30 people competing in one weekend. So you just kind of toss and turn and spin. And then like that, it's all over. And so it takes a couple of days. It's almost like, I don't know how to compare it. Even though it's over, it doesn't feel like it's over for a day or two. I joke with my competitor sometimes. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, we're going to have to have a call on Monday, like a therapy session, just yeah. to like, it's like you have to get it all. Out. Now it's been 10, 12 days. Now I feel great. But yeah, for a couple of days, it's almost like a hangover. It's hard to explain. Interesting. I'm sure if there's any other coaches listening to this, at least at similar to your level. Same. Yeah, I, I talk to a lot of the coaches because, you know, we travel in circles. And so I mean, my coach is on my team, same thing. So yeah, there is a lot of that like camaraderie amongst the coaches. I think right. I think coaches that love coaching feel that anxiety because when you're athletes on stage that's when you have no control you're done so it's just this very helpless feeling of like all right did we do everything we needed to do